Welcome one and all to Collider Movie Talk. We are here in San Diego at Comic-Con. My name is Mark Ellis, this is Dennis Zen, and that is John Schnepp, and we are so excited to be up very early in the morning <laughs> to bring you guys the latest and greatest in the world of movie news from our beautiful location here in downtown San Diego. Dennis, good morning. Good morning. I had about two hours of sleep. Uh -huh. you know, I it's, had it's more at three and a half yeah, hours. What? It's It's great. <laughs> it, it's Comic-Con. We're all happy to hear, yeah. be here. We're jazzed. Yeah. There's a lot of... You know, it's Thursday morning, so not all the news have, has started to break out, but we have uh, definitely some interesting stuff. Sometimes you miss a news story or two when you go live at 3 in the morning. Now, Schnapp, <laughs> what did you do last night? What kind of hijinks did you get into? Well, I was hanging out with all you clowns yeah. over at the, the hit. Solomar Hit Fix party. Yeah. Thanks, Drew McQueenie and all. And it was great. It was like lots of our friends were there. It's one of those, like, pre-Comic-Con before everything gets way too sweaty. And, like, most of our <laughs> – like, half the people we knew were all there getting drunk, so yeah. it was very fun. And that's why we're a little, I'm, I'm not going to talk for them, that's why I'm a little bit uh, hazy right now. And that's <laughs> why I might be a little sweaty as well. But we would never not bring you guys the news on that's a weekday. Right. It's movie talk. So here we go. The way it's going to work today is Dennis is going to read the stories. Yes, Dennis, the head yes. of studio operations, <laughs> is going to be reading the stories for what? us. And then we're going to comment on it a little bit. And Dennis, right off the bat, we got a pretty cool story about Batman. Yes, uh, according to a report from Batman on Film, Ben Affleck's much-anticipated solo Batman movie will involve Batman getting locked up with a menacing crew in Arkham Asylum, the famed home of the most no, his most notorious incarcerated villains from Joker and Mr. Freeze to Poison Ivy and Two-Face. The site cautions it's just a rumor for now, but since Affleck has suggested that his film will feature a lot of villains, mm. it's not out of the realm of possibilities. There's still no word on a release date as of yet. Wow. Great. It sounds like Batman and Robin. We get all these <laughs> villains in Arkham Asylum. This oh, be God. Awesome. You just killed all my enthusiasm for this, no, well, okay. this movie. I mean, well, look, you know Dennis, ben let me, let me is... bring it back for you. Arkham Asylum, the book. See? That's okay. what we're talking yeah, about. Because true. it can get dark. It can get gritty when you have all these villains in here. Batman, who is he going to be taking on? Who's going to be his chief antagonist in the movie? You guys know Ben Affleck is taking the source material seriously. So, Schnepp, you're right. When you hear this news, does it harken you back to one of the best comic book runs in Batman? Well, it did hark the, the actual graphic novel Arkham Asylum, and it makes me think of the video game, the very first one, Arkham Asylum. Yeah, yeah. And that's a, and Ben Affleck, you know, doing his take on Batman, what a true fan he is. So I know he's going to use that source material. I'm not worried about it being like Batman and Robin. I, I <laughs> he could have 18 villains in it, and it's going to be awesome. I love the idea, the premise of it taking place in Arkham Asylum. You get a little, you know, maybe a little pre-story before he gets locked in there, and then it's all him trying to just get out. So I mean, he might even have to team up with one of the villains. Who knows? Do you think? Do you think it's gonna be like a reverse Judge Dread, like Dread, where like instead of like him trying to go up somewhere, mm. like he's trapped in there and he's trying to get out? Maybe. That's not a bad idea, though. So you guys think most of the action in the entire movie is going to be taking place in Arkham with all these different villains trying to all gang up to take down the bat? I think that's what the rumors suggest. I don't know, like, hmm. as far as a Batman film, if that, if maybe it's maybe too constrained sure. for, 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 for a Batman film, especially the first solo one. Just imagine if that's just 45 minutes of a movie. You have an awesome 30-minute intro with just the Batman doing some solo stuff. Then he's locked in Arkham for the next 45 minutes. Then there's a cool like 30-minute ending that's outside of Arkham. Well, you do have an advantage with this first standalone Batman movie in this franchise because unlike previous incarnations, you don't have to retell the story right. of Bruce Wayne becoming Batman. It's we done. already got that yes. from uh, from Batman, uh, Batman versus Superman. So now we can just go into whatever story Affleck and team want to tell. Seems like they have a pretty good handle on what they want to do so far. That's pretty exciting news. Well, now that now that that even once that once they announce that, then we can start guessing who's going to play Scarecrow. Who's going to is we already got Killer Croc because he's going to be in Suicide mm -hmm. Squad. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Where Deadshot, I mean, he might be in Arkham Asylum. We don't know. You know? Needless to say, we'll all be very excited for more news yeah. about Batman. And now we move on to Animated Fair. What do we got in the world of Green Ogres? All right. According to THR, NBC Universal plans to greenlight two DreamWorks animation films per year, a move that allows the studio to keep up with their rival Disney, which has them now hoping to get to the point of releasing at least mm -hmm. two animated films per year in that DreamWorks has first slated Shrek 5 what? What? and a new creation from Edgar Wright and David uh, Williams. 
titled Shadows. Wow. Not much has been offered in the way of the news, only that DreamWorks is hoping to get that new Shrek movie off the ground sooner than later. This comes as no surprise to anybody that they would want to continue a very successful franchise in Shrek 5. What's more intriguing to me is this Edgar White uh, totally. Edgar Wright project. With that, David Williams, he's incredible. Amazingly funny guy. It's called Shad. His name's David Williams. Yeah. I really thought that was a typo. No. Well done, Dennis. <laughs> uh, I think that, that Shadows sounds very cool because you know Edgar Wright, anything he's working on is going to have a great quirky comedic tone to it. Mm -hmm. So, Dennis, when you hear this news, Shrek 5, it's got to be the right play. All that vocal talent coming back. It doesn't really matter if they've aged because because it's a cartoon, they still sound the same. And then, what do you think about this Edgar Wright project? Uh, the Edgar Wright project, like, that's you know, hopefully going to be a uh, because of Edgar Wright, it's mm. going to be something different. You know, mm -hmm. from in the usual animated fare that we see, it's kind of like, you know, we, when we see like a trailer for an anime film, we kind of know what what we're getting. But with Edgar Wright, right. it may go left, it might curve right where we we don't expect it to. As far as Shrek Five, it's kind of like one of those situations where okay. We know this franchise brings in lots of money. I think Shrek 2, before Finding Dory, was the highest uh, domestic animated mm -hmm. film of all time. And uh, they're just probably, okay, now that we've given some breathing room since the last one, now we can come out with a new one. Should that be either one of these uh, movie projects to get your nerd radar going? Shadows, yeah. Especially, like I said, David Wallens, uh, he was also uh, featured in Spaced with Edgar Wright directing. He played mm. the performance artist, the crazy, if you remember that. He was always like doing really weird stuff. So I cannot wait. That's that's the one I'm really excited about. Shrek 5, you know, <laughs> make sure Eddie Murphy's donkey. That's all. Anything that gets Eddie Murphy yeah. back on a yeah, promotion he's got to get tour. Eddie Murphy. More Eddie Murphy. Yeah. That's what we say. And by the way, nobody's really heard from Mike Myers much recently. So having him back as the role yeah. of Shrek, it'd be nice to see Mike Myers again. Okay, what's our next story? All right, this one is probably for Cody and Wendy over there with their, their Pokemon Go <laughs> crazed. They're playing it right yeah, now. Yeah, they, they, they're, not, they're not here they're at Comic-Con right. to actually That's enjoy right. Comic-Con. They're playing no. Pokemon. According to Variety, it's official. Legendary Entertainment has won the rights to a Pokemon movie and is partnering with the Pokemon Company to launch the first live-action film franchise with a Detective Pikachu movie. Right. I don't know what that is. Yes. <laughs> Details are being kept under wraps, but the film will be fast-tracked for production to start in 2017. <sighs> Detective Pikachu is a new character in the Pokemon universe, which was first introduced in Japan through the video game Great Detective Pikachu. Earlier this year... <laughs> So fans who are familiar with it might have a head start on what to expect for the story. For the game, players interact with a Sherlock Holmes-type Pikachu who speaks <laughs> to them and helps him solve mysteries. Universal Pictures yeah. will handle distribution of the live-action film with Toho handling distribution of the film franchise in Japan. Uh, this is nothing short of a genius move. And I'll tell you why, Shep. I know you don't want to talk about Pokemon much, but this thing is going to make gobs of money. Oh, yeah. And Detective Pikachu so lends itself to something where you can interact. So it's not just a movie, but it's also everything that comes with the movie when you can actually go out and play the role of Detective Pikachu. It's cross-branding. It's symbiotic relationships between brands at its finest. Somebody sent me an email, and in the email, it was one of our fans, and they wrote, they basically broke down all the Pokemon mythology and how rich it actually is, which I did not give it credit right. for. Right. I want to thank that fan. I thought you were going to say something else besides credit. And it started with a C as well. The name is <laughs> me, but thank you so much for your email. I appreciate it. Schnepp, how excited are you for Detective as Pikachu? As long as Bubba Sore and Krim Krom are in it, that's all I care about, really. But it, does the Detective Pikachu, does he wear a fedora? He's got to wear a fedora. Okay, so Wendy has let us know he All wears right. a Sherlock Holmes. He wears hat. a Sherlock Holmes. Does he speak English? He plays violin. Sometimes. He speaks. He talks though, right? Pikachu talks. I gotta say, so, he, like, so he's like, like Groot. The, like he just says one word. Yeah, Pikachu. Okay. All right. Well, okay, great. that's exciting. Um, you don't I'm, have to say a lot of words <laughs> to solve. Mysteries. I just want to say, like Pokemon Go is really fun to watch. I like watching other people play. Yeah. Like somebody found a Pokemon on me. Like uh, three days ago. Yeah, we like we were. At, that that we might have been at, a pickup line. We were, no, no, we were at dinner and she. Uh, no, it was a uh, Haletta. She was like, uh, "Oh my God, there's a Pikachu!" And she snapped a picture of it. So okay. that's what they all say. Yeah. Dennis, hey. uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. The right way to go with this. I don't know because I'm not too familiar with the franchise, but I thought they would just kind of go with the standard stuff with the what's the, what's that main character's name Ash or whatever with the, the hat. I thought like go with him and Creakle Pikachu Kronk. and like a regular <laughs> straightforward story. And people tell me that it doesn't even. Take place on Earth, right? Is that is that? I certainly hope I don't not. Know. So we're really the I, wrong people. Yeah, exactly. Right. It takes right. place but, on the planet Bibblesore. <laughs> so I thought maybe they would have gone more the route of actually trying to tie into Pokemon Go, but I guess not. I it, think well, this might be yeah. tying into a new app that might be even. Oh bigger my god! Yeah, you're right. It's Pokemon probably like Go. Detective. Now you're part of Detective. 
catch them all, but they're detective style, like you go on missions and stuff. It's great because I saw like a like a group of old people, like older than me. I'm old, but this was even <laughs> older. And I was like, man, I was like joking, dude. Check it out, that guy's playing Pokemon, and he really was. Yeah. I thought he was just walking awkward. He was like 80 years old or something. Just, you know, you're not yeah. old, Schnepp. You're learned. I'm mean, learned. Yeah, you know. uh, everybody, all the crew back there, you guys do know Pokemon. Is this good? Good idea? All right. Very they good. love it. No. Cody's they not sold it. on yeah. it, but Wendy, Wait, and Wendy, and Ad, Wendy and Adam are giving the thumbs up. Cody's is like... Cody's uh, bitter because he hasn't caught Cody's them Cody's like yet. playing Pokemon Go right now. Like Pick He's supposed to be monitoring the video. Bibble and he's, he's, he's playing it you right now. You literally did not hear the question. Gronk, so let's Gronk. move on to the next I caught topic. Gronk, Gronk. Oh, my God. All right. This one's, <laughs> this one's going to be a fun one. According to Variety, the final installment in the film franchise, the Divergent series Ascendant, Woo-hoo! may be <laughs> skipping a theatrical release altogether. <laughs> Unbelievable. With Lionsgate intent on wrapping up the film series with a TV movie that would introduce characters from a potential spin-off TV show, the Divergent series Allegiant opted to conclude the franchise with two films instead of one as Allegiant set up uh, events of Ascendant. But when Allegiant crashed and burned at the box office, taking in just $179.2 million worldwide, as production on Ascendant was to get underway this summer, the final box office numbers for Allegiant caused Lionsgate to have a change of heart. The plan now is to have Lionsgate's television group handle production of the TV movie that will finalize the storylines involving the current cast, introducing a new cast who will continue on with a TV series adaptation on either a traditional or streaming network. It's now unclear if uh, Woodley, Theo James, or Ansel Elgert, or uh, the other franchise stars will return for a TV movie. Okay, so uh, the Divergent series is so going into a nosedive at the box office that they're just going to be like, okay, you know what? We're not going to waste our time promoting this and releasing this thing in a theater. We're just going to do it on TV. Maybe with a new cast, this screams of everybody's age from Shailene Woodley to Miles Teller to everybody else in that movie being like, oh, we know we signed the contract years ago. We do not want our talent in this movie anymore. So now they're trying to think of a creative way to put a bow on this oh. with the silver lining that maybe if you do have a new cast and it does well ratings-wise on some sort of either TV network or streaming service, that you could have more adventures down the road. Schnepp, is it the right way to go to take Diversion out of the theater and just throw it on TV and let it die? In let me just clarify one thing before I give you my opinion. This is the fourth one. It's supposed to end the series, right? That is uh, correct. Yeah. So they, they made three other movies, and everyone was like, all right, here we go. We're going to do this fourth one. You've seen these other three movies, or maybe I guess a lot of people didn't, but the people who did, they would be expecting this fourth one to tie everything up, and now they're going to put it on TV with a different cast and end it. But then maybe make a series. Is that what it's a different saying? cast? that's a lot less expensive. I think it's a horrible idea. It's like I couldn't believe you guys were even serious. You're like, ah, stop joking around. That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> so ever. But, but what if the alternative is we just we just don't end it? Don't do it. <laughs> just don't make it. Well, that's what usually happens. I mean, that's usually when they make a movie and, and it doesn't do well, yeah. and, and they just don't make another one. You look at something like a Moral Instruments, which which yes. came out. They made the first one. It didn't make enough money, so they didn't make a second one. Okay, maybe that's the, a case where it's just the first movie. What about the, the the Chronicles of Narnia? Those movies, you have X amount of books, right. and when they make one movie, and then we didn't know if we were going to get a second one. But and Mortal they, Instruments they threw on TV. Like a year later, mm-hmm. they did a series that didn't do well. Yeah, I, yeah, I, but, it, but that wasn't connected to the movies, though. This is right. this is directly connected. This is they, they are supposedly wrapping this thing up. Yeah. Unwrap it, throw it away. This I mean, I, maybe they want to do it for the Fans? No, I guess. that's a horrible uh, idea. But, but there the are box office... fans of this thing. The box office is not great because it doesn't have a mass appeal anymore. But there are people that did line up to go see this well, movie. Especially They're if like look at it in ten years when you're like, hey, here's those four movies. Oh, the fourth one has none of the, the cast <laughs> and it's like made for five dollars. It's gonna ruin the other three. So if you were smart, you were just like, let's finish it. Let's make it for fifty million. Let's get it in the theaters and then put all four of them out at some weird deluxe box digital set, whatever. The, it just you know it has to live in. 10 years as something and they're ruining it this way we don't have the live chat going right now but i want everybody to comment if you are a fan of diversion is this the right way to go with this do you really think that having a different cast on a tv network or streaming service instead of the movie is the right way to go to kill off this franchise i think that the reason why they want to do it is because of that glimmer of hope that maybe it does catch on Mm. with a new cast and that you can spin it into something else i don't see that happening i see this being simply a reason that that the original cast does not want to return to this thing, and they will do every sort of legal maneuvering to get out of having to appear in another Divergent movie. 
Mm-hmm. All right, what's our next topic? All right. Fans of the Jason Bourne franchise got their wishes fulfilled when Matt Damon and Paul Greengrass decided to return for the fifth installment of the successful franchise. That was certainly good news to the ears of Universal, who tried to keep the series alive with the Bourne legacy. And now that the studio has Damon and Greengrass back in the house, they want to keep it up uh, that way for as long as possible. Universal Pictures chairman uh, Donna Langley joked about the continual effort to get them to make another Bourne picture, saying, even though Matt and Paul had been very definitive about not wanting to come back, we weren't willing to submit to that. And while the pair are once again staying mum on the prospect of more, Langley remains clear in her intentions. Look, here's what I think the goal is, to keep Matt Damon and Paul Greengrass doing Bourne movies till they can't do them anymore. <laughs> that will be up for the audiences to decide when the audiences see if Universal strikes another winning balance with Jason Bourne, which opens in theaters on July 29th. I think they should just put Jason Bourne on TV. I think they should just right. recast, we'll recast it. Somebody it else's get boyfriend. a younger kid, a brand new director, like someone who's never yeah. directed before ever, and then get a brand new kid who doesn't act and throw them on, just call it Bourne, B- B-O-R-N-E. And then cut that, uh, the budget for all the action sequences. Yeah, no action. Yeah, yeah. I think that... that they just describe the action. It's, it, it <laughs> describe sounds... it. Some guy just talks about yeah, the action. talks about the action. <laughs> then he went through a window and smashed this guy in the face. a book by a fire. Yeah. And then you guys won't believe what Jason. <laughs> oh my God! Um, this this is of course how I think any studio head or anybody involved in the production of a Jason Bourne movie would feel is that it's not truly a Bourne movie unless you have Matt Damon and to a slightly lesser extent Paul Greengrass because they work so well together. All reports right. so far that this new movie kicks ass, so it makes sense they would want them around for as long a time as possible. Now whether Matt Damon or Paul Greengrass are going to be continually this excited to come back to a new Bourne movie. Movie, that remains to be seen. Dennis, how much of that is contingent upon the reception for this Jason Bourne? Movie? I think a lot has to do with it. I think they're, they were done with the franchise after the third one, but because people were clamoring for more Matt Damon, Jason Bourne, and Paul Greengrass, you know, Bourne Legacy kind of got a lukewarm reception. Mm-hmm. It didn't bomb, but it didn't do as well as they wanted it to. Right. They, can't, they couldn't pass that torch to Jeremy Renner, and so... All that demand, it's, it's one of those situations, kind of like with Jurassic World, I mean, that one was even longer, where kind of the absence makes the heart grow fonder, mm. where now it's been a while since we got the last Matt Damon, Jason Bourne, and people are just clamoring for I know right. I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for this one. And so if this one is good, it does well with critics, it does well at the box office especially, I think they're going to take that as a sign like, hey, maybe we should keep doing these. And I, I, yeah. I and Universal is going to be very happy with that. It, it makes all the sense in the world. And, Schnepp, when you look at most A-list actors, they always have, like, that big, uh, you know, superhero mm-hmm. project they can keep coming back to. They can keep milking that cow. Maybe right. with Matt Damon, it's going to be more Jason Bourne movies. Certainly. I, he should stay on this as long as humanly possible. I agree with the producer, Langley. She's going to keep Greengrass and Damon on until they can't do it anymore. And that makes sense. I mean, that, that this is that Matt Damon property where he can go off and do a bunch of independent films or do whatever he wants to do. It's like a one for them, one for me kind of thing, where he can keep going back and being Jason Bourne every two or three years. Greengrass, same thing, man. He's a director. Directors need money to make cool, weird films. He can keep coming back to this awesome franchise. You're right. I mean, having that property coming back with those, the director and the actor, they have that kind of frenetic action that you come, you've come to expect from the way Greengrass directs things and the way Matt Damon per- performs as Jason Bourne, so I'm excited to see this film, and I'd like to see them continue. And as thrilled as we all are to be here at Comic-Con this weekend, I'm kind of excited for it to be next Monday, because that's when I get to see Jason <laughs> nice. Bourne, and then we get our review up. So right can't wait for that movie, yes. one of my most anticipated of the year, for sure. What's our next story? All right, with the Comic-Con presentation set for this weekend, Warner Brothers has released four new The Lego Batman movie images. The film is a spin-off of the celebrated The Lego Movie, directed by Christopher Miller and Phil Lord, who serve as producers on this film while being while co-director Chris McKay steps up and takes the reign as director. USA Today released the new Lego Batman images along with the details on the Joker and Robin. The Joker isn't the chaos-loving crown prince of crime. Instead, he has his own insecurities and specifically sees himself on the same level as Batman appear at the top of the game. <laughs> Director Chris McKay says that's not, uh, that's not the case, and this sends the Joker into a spiral trying to prove to Batman that he is indeed the greatest enemy. As for Dick Grayson, a.k.a. Robin, it turns out that the billionaire Bruce Wayne accidentally adopted him at a charity auction. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I dude. love everything I'm hearing about Lego Batman. I the, from those like teaser trailers that were just kind of little scenes or Batman mm-hmm. talking about himself to now what the psyche of the Joker is against Batman because Joker and Batman even in the serious comic books they have this relationship where they know they kind of need each other. And this is playing into that, that the Joker wants to be on the same level as Batman. He wants to be as recognized. Maybe he just wants to be loved. And then the Robin at a charity auction thing is just hilarious. This movie could be not only one of the best, you know, I guess animated films of next year, it could be one of the funniest, Dennis. Yeah, Yeah, because Batman in the Lego movie was one of the highlights. I mean, it was all around a great movie, but everyone remembered all the Batman lines and having a whole movie of this especially if it's in the same tone and the same type of humor. That whole thing with Robin is is, is hilarious. Accidentally adopted him. Right. <laughs> Schneff, you were adopted at a charity auction. Yes, How I was. News hit you? Uh, very close to home. Um, <laughs> it's funny, though. I love the picture of Robin. It looks it looked to me like Carrie Kelly so mm-hmm. I, from the Bat- Dark Knight Re- Returns, so I don't know if they're going to have multiple Robins in it. But I love the premise. I love the uh, kind of like hearkening back to the old Batman, like uh, Bert, uh, Adam West and Cesar Romero as the Joker, like that that kind of back and forth kind of fun rivalry sort of thing. So I think by making Batman really funny, you can also like, hey, look, you've got the DC Universe Batman. You got Ben Affleck as a really dark Batman. Here's the flip side of that Batman and all of his rogues galleries. And it can actually be really fun. So. And you guys can check out those images of Robin and the Joker on Collider.com right now. And you're right, the Joker, it looks like a, a mishmash of Jared Leto's Joker to some extent, but also Cesar Romero totally. coming back into play. So Lego Batman definitely on our list for most anticipated of next year. Do we have another story, Dennis? We have one last story. Uh, Disney has released the first international trailer for Moana online, directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, the duo behind The Little Mermaid and Aladdin. The film revolves around Moana, a spirited teenage girl who sets to who sets sail to prove herself a master sailor and fulfill her ancestors' unfinished quest with the demigod Mau- M- Maui. Mau- Maui. Uh, it was just Maui. Maui. Like oh. the island. Yes. Okay. Played by Dwayne Johnson along for the adventure. The movie features original songs by Lynn manuel Miranda along with the voice talent of Alan Tudyk. Moana opens in theaters on November 23rd. Oh, Alan Tudyk's doing a voiceover? That's, That's crazy. Um, I saw this trailer and I really liked it because it... it it's, it's building on the promise that we got when we were at D23 last year, and they showed us the first ever seen footage, or I guess, you know, the, the, the animation of this movie where water plays a role in the movie. It's almost like a character mm-hmm. in the movie, and you get that feel from watching this trailer. And Dennis dropped the names of The Little Mermaid, Aladdin. Right. People who are working on this have a pretty good track record. So I think Moana is going to be a huge movie. I think it's going to be pretty damn good, too. Schnapp. You know what? I didn't even have to see this trailer to know that I want to see it. You didn't watch the trailer. Because I didn't watch the trailer. But The Rock is in it, and that's all I got to say. But he's animated. Can he do it with the voice the same way? Yes. What do you think? I'm it doesn't asking. matter what you no. think. He fell into it, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys uh, watch the history of movie talk, I've walked into that trap like, like six <laughs> so seven many times. times. And I you got a blind no, spot for it. I have no idea it's coming. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you didn't hear me? I'll talk louder. <laughs> you know what? Just, Here's a little hit. Down. When we're talking about The Rock, it might be coming at you. I just forget. <laughs> Dennis, did you like the trailer? Yeah, I liked the trailer. It was because we had gotten one before that was kind of more of a montage of different sequences. Mm-hmm. This one was actually kind of more like a short clip. You got to see uh, Moana as a young... I don't know how far off it is from her age in the actual movie, but I think she's younger, and she's walking into the water, and... It, you kind of get that kind of Moses thing where it's like parting of the mm-hmm. sea. Mm-hmm. It, it just had looked really cool being able to see all the sea creatures swim around her while her not being actually touched by the water. And introducing like a, a, a different culture that we haven't seen in a Disney mm. movie before, different mythology, different mm. traditions. I think it's exciting. I think it's obviously going to be a huge movie because of who's involved from the vocal talent to Disney being the, behind it. But uh, if you guys have not uh, checked out the new Moana trailer like Schnapp has it, make <laughs> sure you check it out and let us know what you think and comment right now. And with that, I believe we are fresh out of news stories for today, Dennis. Yeah. But what can the fans expect from us live here at Comic-Con? On this weekend we will be doing a lot of new segment videos so we'll be like if some news drops we're gonna sit here like like we're talking now and have little short five minute ten minute videos discussing stuff if like a trailer drops if footage drops if pictures drop if any type of news 
drops. We'll, we'll be doing that throughout the day. Also, we're doing uh, Hall H and Ballroom 20 coverage. We'll be covering some of the, the bigger movies in the Marvel panel, the DC panel. I think we're doing the Marvel press line as well. We, we got a bunch of stuff coming out. So if people stay tuned and just uh, are subscribed to this YouTube channel, mm. they'll see all that stuff come out. Absolutely. Schnapp, you know people. You hobnob with big wigs last night. All the what time. are you hearing? What's the big thing we're going to hear Man, at Comic-Con this weekend? Man, there's some weekend? craziness. Marvel DC is the big the big one on Saturday. I've heard a lot of rumors about some something something happening. Mm -hmm. So we got, you know, see if that really is real. But um, yeah, that's kind of exciting news. There's just a lot of stuff that you keep hearing about, but we're, we're going to have to see if it actually happens. Maybe we'll do some man on the street and woman mm -hmm. on the street stuff. I know there's a bunch of people just sleeping in sleeping bags outside that we need to get information from <laughs> at late at night at three in the morning right. while they think they can sleep. Somebody like me or else. I'm still not sure not what the, what are they waiting? Are they waiting for trolls? I do they not know like like I saw all for. those people sleeping. I was like, you know, you could probably just walk in yeah, the, tomorrow. Yeah, trolls. There yeah. is yeah. a market for trolls out there that you guys are sorely underestimating. Right. They're like, no, no, no. No, we got to get the front seat. Yeah, of we got to be like we got to like, be the uh, can't, first can't, people to get in. Yeah, there. we can't just be in Hall H. We yeah. have to be in the front row. And they got to know that we waited for trolls. Yeah, so it has to be a thing. You yeah. might actually see live trolls on stage in Hall H. They come out in rollerblades, which was the best troll when I was a kid. I want another <laughs> rollerblading <laughs> troll. It is so exciting for all of us to be down here because the entire crew came. Everybody is strewn about downtown San Diego in the Gas Lamp District, but we all come together. We got to hang out a little oh, bit. Oh, we got the meet and greet. Let's and talk yeah, about the meet and greet is today. That is today at the Hilton. Bayfront, Fox Sports Bar and Grill. It's going to be on that huge patio outside. The meet and greet is Thursday, which is today, 5 to 9 p.m. We will be on site hanging out, getting sweaty with you guys. <laughs> and uh, f feel free to come by, buy us a drink. We're not going to say no. Nope. No, not at all. They're allowed to do that first, Dennis? Yeah. Okay, good. Good to know. Mr. John Schnapp, thank you so much for hey. joining us today. Where can everybody find you out there on the social medias? You guys can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, just at John Schnapp, and uh, I'll be here at Comic-Con doing a bunch of stuff. I've posted it on all my sites, of all the different stuff I'm doing. So. Mr. Dennis Zen, great job reading the news today. Yeah, thanks. Very well crispy. Well done. I think I, we need so, to so we don't need Ashley or Sinead what? or Natasha anymore? Hang on a second. I'll, do, I'll just do it. Do you know how many people are writing the comments right now? <laughs> yeah. F, no, yeah. screw are off. Are you crazy? Don't even Joke about it. I'll don't even joke about you. it. <laughs> well, if you don't have yeah. a uh, future job as a news reader, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Twitter at Think Here on Instagram, Dennis.tzng. Yeah, follow all of us because we're gonna be posting a lot of you know, our reactions, mm -hmm. pictures, everything. We we had we took a cool picture last night at the Hit Picks party. We took a great yeah, they had one of those photo booths and we had a little bit too much fun <laughs> with it. You can simply find me at Mark Ellis Live. You can subscribe right here at Collider Video, as well as my YouTube channel, Schmoes, know that I do with Christian Harloff. Thanks to all the Collider fans that came to see me live on stage, Doug Loves Movies last night. We had a boatload of fun. And make sure you guys stay right here at Collider Video's YouTube channel because tomorrow morning we're gonna be doing another movie talk, hopefully with more divergent news. Yes. yes. See you Detergent. Then. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.